Well, shalom everybody, shalom my bride, hello to those that are just dropping in. Uh, tonight what I'd like to talk about, the Sabbath has just ended here about, oh, a half hour ago or so, and it was quite peculiar because I spoke with my bride on the telephone here, uh, right when her Sabbath was starting about, and I went to sleep after that. Well, I went to lay down, I told her I'd lay down, you know, with her when she... She laid down and uh, we'd pray together, but I was going to get up and I said, you know, I better try to get a little sleep. So I fell asleep and I never woke up until like after 8 o'clock this morning and I didn't like who I was. i have been changing so much and I felt pretty foul. I, I didn't feel oh comfortable with myself at all so I forced myself to write my bride a few words and I, I made myself lay down again and, and I slept from 8 o'clock this morning again all the way up until about 7.59 when I looked at the clock when I woke up it's like wow I slept almost the whole 24 hour period but I feel pretty great right now it's not like I I have any thoughts in my head at all I mean, it's it's quite peculiar, the changes that are going on in me, and I used to have like 80,000 thoughts going at the same time, you know, 200 different subject matters, and, you know, 30 different thoughts for each one of them at any given time, but today, after I got up, I went out, I soaked my feet on the porch with some uh, vinegar water, and... Uh, I was watching the bird come down and sing, and, and there wasn't any thoughts. I had to make myself think of things. It was something I've never done before, and it ended up, I have to say, one of the uh, most delightful Sabbaths I think I ever had, because my thoughts weren't going everywhere, and, <laughs> you know, it really was peaceful. But anyway, I, I'd like to go ahead and, what the topic is here today, you know, and we do have to pray, but uh, the topic is... Uh, Uremia or Jeremiah chapter 23 and I feel like Jeremiah a lot you know when he does his writings but this chapter is particularly for these last days it, it it had some application for the days of old okay all the way up until now but these it specifically speaks about these latter days in this chapter and I want to to share that and point it out with everyone but you know if y'all would you know I'd like to uh, give a little blessing here for you for my bride for our king and our father and for myself you know I'd like to do that so dear if you'd like to put this on pause or anybody else you know and say your prayers I will then pick up with it afterwards so so if you want go ahead and click it off I'm ready Oh, Father Yahweh, we praise you. We thank you through your righteous Son. We ask that you will watch over us and open up our minds that we may see. And turn on those switches that we may understand and perceive your words that bring life. We ask that the understanding that you desire for us to have in these last days, that it will be opened up, that we may each carry these words to our loved ones and even our enemies, that we may learn to forgive completely, that we may become sons and daughters of you, Father Yahweh, and brothers and sisters, do you, our King. I praise you. I thank you for all things. We all thank you and praise you for all things and pray that you will guide us each and every day. And we thank you and praise you and ask that you'll forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And may we do that every moment of every day. May we forgive that we may be forgiven ourselves. And through your righteous Son, Father Yahweh, we praise you. We thank you. Yahshua, thank you. And we ask that these things be done for your name's sake. Hallelujah. Okay, wow, that's great. Anyway, uh, chapter 23 of Uremia. Excuse me. I don't know how to edit, so. So you get those nose blowns here and there, I guess, you know. Thank the pollen for that. But uh, here in verse 1 it says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. See, so, so there are sheep in our father's pasture, which now belong to our king. And there's a lot of doctrines out there today, you know, things such as the Lunar Sabbath and, you know, Christmas and Easter and everything else that seems to want to pull people out of the pasture. And our, our king's not too pleased. Verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Father of Israel, now our king, against the pastors that feed my people, 
Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith Yahweh. And, and these things are going to come down upon the uh, tithe collectors. And, and the way they've been scattered, these uh, sheep in the flocks, is by false teachings, false doctrines. Things such as once saved, always saved. You know, these things actually do scatter the flock because they won't believe the truth when they believe these lies it's not easy and and until you know somebody like myself comes along with the truth and sometimes all it does is make people angry i'm not intending to make anybody angry i pray that we all would understand in return that's what you know uremia the the whole thing is about is hoping that these ones will return. Our king even said, you know, he asked, he says, will the faith even be found when I return? And right now there's very few on this this earth, and I say this earth because, you know, some people when they read the scriptures, they, they have a hard time seeing even the smallest and basic of things. You know, we've got lies out there telling us how the earth goes around the sun and all that stuff. But that's not the case. Our Father, our Creator, that had these scriptures written by men, you know, by the power of Holy Spirit, he said that the sun moves, okay? He said it's in its circuit, and it goes into its chamber, and like the bridegroom comes out of its chamber, you know, to go on its circuit. It doesn't say the earth moves at all. It says that the, uh, the sun does, the moon does, the stars, they've all got these circuits in the firmament this dome that's over the earth now you can believe what you want i'd rather believe the holy scriptures so i figure i'd bring that out to you maybe you'll be able to hear what these these things are saying with a little more clarity Jeremiah 23 3 and i will gather the remnant of my flock now this remnant that Jeremiah is speaking of enoch called the righteous ones are our king was calling the elect uh, as well as his disciples, you know, uh, through his disciples, calling them the elect, the chosen, uh, the 144,000. <coughs> and he's going to gather that number, okay, out of my flock, out of all countries where I've driven them. See, this... Uh, the tribes and way in the days of old they were dispersed our father you know sent them to the four corners of the earth and throughout okay because it was a way of protection Satan wouldn't be able to have such an easy job seeing uh, those who they are after they were were dispersed our father kept these ones hidden for a while and now they're starting to be revealed and over you know thousands of years uh, a lot of things have been lost none of us i think actually uh, kept the laws there were nobody actually keeping all the laws up until these last days everybody was falling short uh may still be falling short it talks about how the uh, laws, you know, you think you're wise, and lo, you know, these laws are uh, were written wrong, and that may be be the cause. But our adherence to them, just the same, our king sees we have no desire for anything but to adhere to his ways, and so he forgives us for those things. And he said, "There's not one on the earth that doesn't sin. No, not one. Only our king didn't sin. You know, so we may be sinning, thinking we're not." And that's okay, because our king knows these things. He's allowed everything in the scriptures to be put there just the way they are. And if we believe, you know, our king is going to forgive us. He's going to show us the real truth when he comes back. But we who have so far submitted ourselves to this every living word, he can trust us to know that no matter what he shows us, we're going to believe it. Uh, even if it's in controversy to what we once believed, when our king shows it to us, we're going to say, oh, wow, that makes more sense, you know, and, and be thankful for the truth. So anyway, Jeremiah 23, 3 says, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds. 
and they shall be fruitful and increase. Okay, and I, I had seven children, you know, so I guess that you, you can say was uh, fruitful and increasing. And then here in Uremia 23, 4, he says, And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. Okay, so that's, that's quite a bit right there. I don't want to consider myself a shepherd. Uh, I've got words that I speak that are truth as far as scriptures uh, state, and I see the truths in, in deeper wells than most even know the wells are there. And there will be shepherds, okay? Now, you can ask me any question pertaining to salvation. I'd be glad to answer. So if that's, you know, what a shepherd is, you know, I guess I got no choice in the matter but to be one. But I don't want that responsibility over anybody, you know? I, I want to live in peace with everyone and allow our king to do it, but he's got his hierarchy that he's setting up, and, and I don't know what it is right now. He'll reveal these things. Uh, but he said, and I'll set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And that's what I'm doing now, whether I'm a shepherd or not, and I hope I'm not. I'm feeding you because I'm giving you things that you've never seen before. And then it says, and they shall fear no more. Now, now please realize, uh, this is not reverence. You can't really... Uh, uh, substitute that word fear for reverence, you know, because it's not going to be like, and they shall reverence no more. No, it's talking about having terror, having fear, not knowing what is to come and whatever is to come is fearful, that sort of thing, because I've been trying to explain to you time and time again, if you've been listening to these videos, that the way to salvation is keep the Ten Commandments, uh, the 613 give or take laws. They are uh, how the Ten Commandments must be kept, and then the trust in our King. And, and this is the salvation. This is the the way to rid yourself of any fear at all because if you keep these commandments and the laws that cast out all fear okay the terrors leave you and you come to realize that truly greater who is in you is greater than who's of the world and you'll be able to see things with more clarity and with joy be able to face each in every day that's to come no matter what the horrors are you'll not fear because you know you'll have this uh, penalty of life because of the actions that you've deserved payment for in your life is toward righteousness if you're keeping these scriptures but otherwise you know you're just earning the uh, wages of sin which is unto death and you will fear but it's not talking about uh, the sinners here. It's talking about those that desire to overcome. He says, And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, and neither shall they be lacking, saith, I guess you can say, Yahshua. Because he's the one that's going to be uh, taking care of these things in these last days. Our Father gave everything to him, so you know, even though our Heavenly Father said this, it, it's now our King's plan. He gave everything to the king to bring about for these last days, and, and therefore I believe we can actually put our king's name there instead. I mean, in, in even doing so, our father and the son are at one, just like a husband and a bride are at one. Two totally different, I don't want to say people, because, you know, people is, you know, flesh and blood and bone. Uh, they're made out of clay, but our creator and the son now are spirit. So, anyway, behold, the days come, or, like I said, I'm going to read uh, 4 again. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith Yahshua. Behold, the days come, saith Yahshua, that I will rise unto David a righteous branch. And a king shall reign and, and increase or prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Okay, so I don't know who this righteous branch is other than our king. And he came from David. And I believe our king is rising up and he's going to reign in these last days, but through men until he returns. He's going to 
uh, be putting his words in people's mouths, such as even my own, so that I could bring these words forth and our king may come into your life and, and take over the spot that I'm trying to uh, build there so that you'll have a foundation. Once you get your foundation and trust in our king, you won't have much need for me and that's where I want you to be, okay? I don't want you I don't want to be your shepherd. I don't I don't want to be your teacher, <laughs> you know. A guide, okay? That's what I was told I'd be as a guide, and I'd rather listen to Enoch on that one, you know. I'm a reward unto all the earth. I'm a guide. I'm a gift to you, you know, and I'd, I'd much rather be that than some kind of authority over you, because I just don't want it. <laughs> I never did. But our king has a way to convince me to be doing things that I have no desire for, okay? I, I just got married, for instance, you know. I mean... And falling in love was the easiest thing that ever took place in my life. Uh, never did it before, and boy, I'll tell you what, it captured me pretty quick, but for benefits, I believe. So anyway, here in Uremia 23, 6, it says, In his days, Yada shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called. Yahshua, our righteousness, okay, and and this is talking, you know, about one of the 12 tribes there, but they're going to be saved, they're alive in these end days, and we're going to dwell safely because it talks about being protected uh, once the dragon comes after the woman, uh, of course, you know, the beast does have power over it for a while, but they're going to escape and I believe that's going to take place. I don't know whether it's going to be down there in Antarctica where we're taken, uh, where Admiral Byrd seen that land that's undefiled, so they say, but the whole earth is defiled. It's just less defiled. Things in the air go everywhere, and things in the water go around everywhere, and you know, it, it's not just that, it's the thoughts, the intent of men's heart that actually have a large effect on everything that takes place in politics and our daily lives and, and just the way we feel about things. When, when the world is distressed, everything is distressed. And when the world is, you know, joyful, well, everything is joyful and things work great. Uh, science, you know, they, they, they prove some of this, and they've actually had those that prayed, I think it was for Chicago, Illinois there, you know, Sin City, one of them, and they had, you know, a bunch of people that would pray for the crime rates and such to drop, and the chief of police said, you know, for you know, for the cram rights, you know, to, to drop like 25 or, you know, percent or whatever, you know, it would take a, a blizzard. <laughs> they had to, it had to be snowed in or something for any kind of effect like that. But these men and women did pray, and the, the you know, the rate of crime actually did dwindle. It, it went way down just from people praying. But they don't pray all the time anymore, and Oh, it's a, it's a wonderful blessing to be able to pray and, and to pray with one another if you're believing. But we need to also believe all these words, and Uremia wants you to know. And I'm not going to read this whole chapter, okay? I'm going to read certain spots. I do hope you'll read it yourself. He speaks of many things here. He says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahshua, that they shall no more say, you know, Yahshua liveth, which brought our, or Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Father liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. I am, I am like a man whom wine hath overcome. Because of Yahshua and because of the words of his holiness. And, and I feel like that a lot, you know. It's like, wow, man. I, 
I tremble with anger sometimes hearing some of these lies that the preachers are putting out there, these tithe collectors, and, and leading people astray. You know, when you put your money in that collection plate for these lying tithe collectors to gather and spend on their own desires and such, it's you're actually in agreement with what these ones are saying, and that's why you're paying them. So don't pay them. Don't be in agreement with them. Use those uh, tithes that aren't even of the law. You know, they're not requirements for these preachers out here today to be gathering these things. That was a temple law. Okay, now it's about the only law that, you know, the preachers want you to keep is that tithing law. Well, until they want to teach all the other laws, I suggest that you tell them that you're not going to keep that one. You know, not, and, and it's not like you're not keeping a law. It's not a law. It's not in effect right now. That's in effect in the kingdom of heaven above. Okay, 10% for the beings there, whatever, you know, they're... They're bringing these things in, but our king doesn't need uh, finances to support his work. He's bringing forth the sacrifices and everything for us. Uh, when there were humans in the temple, what they were supposed to do with that tithe, or at least partial of the tithe, is to make sure that the priests uh, were taken care of. They had their food and everything else they needed. So they could just apply themselves to reading these scriptures and to uh, digging as deeply as they can to bring forth answers for the people. And they weren't doing that. Our king showed you that. They started using the Talmud. Uh, after they were taken to Babylon, they really destroyed the laws by putting man's traditions in there with the laws and they did a bad job mixing everything up and our king told them about this when he was on the earth and he let them know you know you shouldn't do these you know traditions of men you should keep our father's laws and commandments that's what you should do also my friends if you're listening to this please do that and then it says in uh, verse well once again in uh, 2310 for the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, saith Yahweh, Yahshua. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. So you can see that these ways that you're paying for, if you're paying tithe, and hopefully you're not doing that anymore, or at least considering not to, and instead help a family down the block or across town there, you know, that's, you know, that you know is poor, and, and or, you know, someone might have uh, been hurt, you know, out of work, that sort of thing, to where he's not bringing in the money that he used to, and and they're getting all stressed out. You can help these people. You're, you know, for the most part, those that are uh, in the churches gathering the tithe, they'll, they'll help a little bit, so it appears as though they use this money that they're gathering for lying to you for a benefit. Don't depend on them in that, you know. It's better if you just you know, put money in an envelope or something, your tithe, and dropped it off at uh, the house of someone that needs it, that you know needs it. And you will bless them in ways, and you might even give them a spark of hope to start looking into these scriptures if they ever see some kindness, you know. It, it just could work. So maybe put a scripture in there, you know, some one of your best like scriptures, you know. And if, it, if it's in there with, you know, uh, a couple 20s or something, you know, uh, Certainly they're going to read it, and maybe they'll get the gist of what the purpose was why you helped them out to begin with, because you loved them, you know? So so think about these things, okay? It's, it's not going to be these prophets and such, you know? They're profane. They're unholy. They're speaking the wrong things to you. Please stop paying them. And their ways are slippery, and they're going to fall backwards into the pit, and anyone that's you know, tied to them are going to go into that pit as well, and, and I'm sorry to say, it's not going to be a pleasant place for you. You should listen to the words I'm speaking here, that Eremia is speaking, and, and please, let's get together and repent. 
Verse 12, Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith Yahshua. Now you can see here that Yahshua can bring evil upon them. And all these, the way he's going to do it, it's not like he's doing evil himself. He's just simply opening a little door for Satan to get in there to accomplish what needs to be accomplished, and therefore what Satan does is evil, okay? So he's bringing the evil by allowing it. But our king is not actually doing it. Satan's very important. Very important for your salvation, you know? You've got to be tested and tried by Satan. And that's why I forgive Satan, and I love Satan, and I know it's hard for many people to understand this, but, you know, Scripture does say there, I believe it was Matthew chapter 5, that when somebody does these things, they're actually a son of Yahweh, and a brother to our king. So when you forgive Satan and love Satan, I'm not talking about like you would love our king, it's like you would love our enemy. It doesn't mean you got to trust them. It doesn't mean you got to have them over for dinner or move them, you know, into a, a spare bedroom or anything. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that you're not going to have bad feelings toward them or desire them to, to perish. You know, our king says if you desire anyone to perish, man, you're in, you are in quite jeopardy, you know. You're in a jeopardous position that you yourself may perish. We should want the best, even for our enemies, hoping that they'll repent, see the error of their ways, and become a, a strong pillar in our king's house here, you know, that's being built. That's what you want to do, and even with Satan, you know, I mean, she is the worst enemy of all, and it says, love your enemies. You know, it's just that simple. I understand this, and I don't expect everybody to understand it, you know, but... I'm not doing any evil in this. In fact, because of it, and I didn't even realize it uh, before the other day when I brought the video on it, I, I it was like, you know, the scriptures are opening up again now, okay? They're just, I had a lot of understanding given to me over the years past, but now it's like, boom, it's all, even that's opening up. It's like these transformers, you know, look like a car at first. Now they're these great big towering robots shooting you know, rockets or whatever, it's all just expanding from this little seed, and now a mighty oak is, is being revealed in these scriptures. And once again, 23.12, Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness, for these uh, false prophets and preachers and pastors and, oh, uh, reverends and priests, uh, fathers, and rabbis, all these guys are all cloaked right into that. <coughs> <coughs> Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith Yahshua. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. So you can see uh, Baal is being mentioned here. The ways of Baal, Baal, have caused the people of Israel to err. Well, it also says in verse 27 here in this same chapter that our father's name was forgotten for Baal or Baal, or, you know, however one would pronounce it, but it's B-A-A-L. And when you look up that word in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, un, under verse 27, you'll see that Baal, or Baal, with an equal sign, okay? Equals, Baal equals Lord. That's what it says. So when you pray to Lord, you're praying to Baal, which is the same thing that was going on here in the days of Jeremiah. There wasn't anything to stop this in the days of Jeremiah, and it went further and further. And 
and it was more and more easy for Baal to be worshipped as the days went on because it was something that crept in just like Christmas and Easter and these other pagan holidays and uh, you know it, it it's a pity and it's a shame, but it had to be done. These things had to be done, otherwise the scriptures would be a lie, and they're not a lie. There's only some that's going to come to understand it first, and then there's going to be a great number that no man can count come out later. I'm blowing the shofar, I, hear, I hope you hear it. Okay, the, this worship of Baal, worship of the Lord, when you say your prayers and you call on Lord, you're calling on Baal. But our king can... I mean, if your heart is in the right place and you want to keep our Father's laws as our king did, and he never sinned, and that's what sin is. First Yachanan uh, 3 verse 4, sin is the transgression of the law, or it's just lawlessness, okay? Sin is lawlessness. And if you're not lawless, if you're wanting to keep the Sabbath and such, and, and even if you was calling right on Baal, you know, in your prayers. Our king would hear you because your desire is to please our king, and our king would consider it his own fault that he hadn't brought you into this understanding yet, and he does. That's why he sent me, you know, so that he might clarify to you what the truth is, that you may understand and come unto him, and he'll teach you all sorts of wondrous things. In fact, you know, I'm, I probably shouldn't even be doing these things. It says not to cast your pearls before the dogs and the swine. So I figure if I put it on a video, I don't have to worry about being rent or anything from you unless you want to put words down there that are hateful or whatever. And, and I haven't seen these in a while, which I'm thankful for. It means that some people are understanding, but it also means that very few people watch my videos. So and I'm doing this for my bride. And anyone else's bride that wants to be taught, or any man, any head of a household, I've got that authority to teach you. If you'll listen, it's been given to me. I don't care for it much, but I do love spreading the truth. I just, ah, oh, you know, the obligations of it is, is something I, I don't care much for. But I'm not going to be the one that took that talent I was given and hide it in the ground. I'm not doing that. I, I took that talent. Uh, a friend of mine gave me this Microsoft Life Cam that I can use, and for some reason it, it really goes haywire sometimes, and it shouldn't be. There's no purpose for that or reason, except that our king is either intervening by Holy Spirit or allowing Satan to uh, do it, but whatever it is, it, it comes straight from heaven, whether or not all the words in these videos are heard or not. Uh, Uremia 23.13, and I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem and horrible things. So here you got Samaria, uh, where our king went to, and Yachanan chapter 4 speaks of that, where he went up to the woman by the well, and she was a Sumerian, and she said to him, like, uh, hey, you know, our fathers say that in these mountains is where we're supposed to worship the Father, but, you know, uh, the Jews, the Yadayim, say that Jerusalem is where the Father should be worshipped, and our king said right straight out, just like, Uremia saying here, he says, you know, the, the day comes that the Father won't be worshipped neither in Samaria nor in Jerusalem. And he said this salvation comes from the Yadayim. Uh, scripture says Jews, but the letter J wasn't invented until about 300 years ago, so our king actually said the Yadayim, and I'm, I'm one of the Yadayim. A Yadai, or the Yadayim will pray with their hands up. They will believe and walk in the every word that our Heavenly Father had spoken. And now those words, our King became them, so we're going to walk in our King. I'm a Yadaim, of the Yadaim. I am Yadai. I am a Yadai, which is uh, singular, and Yadaim is what you are if you believe. You are with me in this. So there's two or more gathered in our king's name at all time here. So we become the Yadaim. Otherwise, by yourself, you're just a Yadai. And 
we are going to bring forth this truth, okay? Because they're not going to be worshiping the Father in Samaria, the mountains of Samaria, nor in Jerusalem, and they don't. I mean, it's also called uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is what Jerusalem's called right now. So the things that are taking place there are not, you know. Uh, I mean, the prophecies coming about are of our Father, but the teachings that are there, they're not. They're not of the king, they're not of the father. Uh, they are practicing Sodom and Gomorrah, but our father prophesied certain things that the son is going to carry out on Jerusalem in these last days and across the world, okay? So this is a lot of what he's speaking about here. He says, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom. Well, there you go. I, I'm sorry. I didn't even reread this chapter before I got on. I just said to myself, you know, while I was said to me, it was said to me, I needed to do something on Jeremiah 23. And I was just speaking of these things that uh, is what's being said. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't read this chapter. And uh, it's been months, I think, since I read this particular chapter. I've read parts of it and I've referred to it in many of the videos. But, you know, it's kind of surprising here where I just talked about Sodom. And, and that's what's being said here in verse 14. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith Yahshua of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. And once again, you know, you take a look at all the churches and religions across the planet. You can see this actually had taken place. He's feeding us with this wormwood and gall. And it's, you know, the name Baal, Lord, okay? Everyone calls on this Lord. And it's, it's actually brought you far away from our king, but he wants to bring you closer. And that's why he had you write these things for your understanding, for your instruction, hoping that you'll see in, in return. <coughs> And because you haven't so far, he sent me now to explain it to you so that you might. That's all I'm here for, okay? I'm here to help you understand, and then you got to go from there, okay? I can't pick, I'm not going to pick you up and carry you anywhere. You're going to have to stand on your own, and I'll pick you up with the words, but you've got to apply them yourself. I can't do this for you. Salvation. You must work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If Moshe and Father Abraham and Isaac and all the righteous saints were here right now on this earth, not one of them could save you. Even our king, if he was here on the earth today, right now, standing right before you, he couldn't save you. You have to do this yourself. That's what that fellow on the stake next to our king that day had done. He came, he came to realize, wow, this man didn't do anything wrong. And because he had a desire to stick up for this man and to say, look, we deserve this. He acknowledged he was a sinner even. And our king simply said, okay, because you saved yourself, you shall be saved, is what he was saying there when he said, you know, today you'll be in paradise with me. Well, Today he will be, but from the moment he died, he was sleeping. For thousands of years he's sleeping, and when he wakes up, it's still going to be that day for him. And when he wakes up, he'll be in paradise. That's what our king's saying. He didn't say, you know, that your ghost is going to go to heaven or something, because there's not a scripture in the Holy Bible that says anyone's going to heaven. No one's going to heaven, only the Son. Only the Son has ascended or descended into the into the heaven. Okay, that's that's all there is. Heaven's coming here, people. Okay, it's going to come here. Man will inherit the earth. We're not inheriting heaven. <laughs> you know, it. We're not going to heaven. 
Now, heaven is going to be the headquarters. That's the main office of our Heavenly Father and His Son. But, you know, that's the earth. <laughs> you know, the earth is what man's going to inherit if they repent. And uh, he talked about this water of gall and such for... Uh, from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Verse 16, For thus uh, thus saith Yahshua, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of your own heart, and not out of the mouth of Yahweh. They say still unto them that despise me, the Father hath said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, Oh, no evil shall come upon you. You know, Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. <laughs> All these imaginations. Oh, nothing's going to take place with you, boy, because you love the Lord, you know. Baal is right with you. And wow. 23.18 For who hath stood in the council of Yahweh or Yahshua or both you know you can't stand in Yahweh's council without being in Yahshua's council you can't stand in Yahshua's council without being in Yahweh's council so for who hath stood in the council of Yahweh and hath perceived and heard his word who hath marked his word and heard it I have and I hope you do too Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh, or Yahshua, is gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. It doesn't say the righteous here. It doesn't say the remnant. It doesn't say the called out ones, or the number that no man can count. Uh, now, it may fall on some of their heads if they haven't repented yet, but this is going to be a large number, and it's going to take some time, and it may take them to get burnt a little bit for them to repent and see they've got no hope, and then they'll be like Thomas, you know, with a lesser reward, but they'll still have a reward of everlasting life just the same. And it, and it talks about there's going to be the poor in the kingdom forever. They'll always have poor. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? There's nothing wrong with being poor. I've been poor. I am poor, you know? But that makes me rich. So, you know, a lot of these words are not exactly what they seem, especially when they've been brought up to the light so they could be seen and, and measured in the light properly according to the law. You see that a lot of these that look like curses are actually blessings. Behold, verse 19, Behold, a whirlwind of Yahweh is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, for it shall grieve grievously upon the head of the wicked. It's going to fall. The anger of Yahshua shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. Now, this will show you. This is proof and evidence that these things weren't for back then. They, they were for back then, but they're more prevalent for right now in these days because it specifically states here, In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. Now, what, what it's saying there, and consider it perfectly, other versions, you know, and the Strong's too, will point out that the word consider actually means understand. You shall understand it perfectly. What perfectly? Well, this plan of, of keeping the Ten Commandments, the 613 laws, give or take, must be upheld to keep the Ten Commandments and to trust in our King. You will understand this perfectly, and you'll see all these other plans, too, you know, and prophecy as they unfold. Uh, hopefully, someone will end up with a spirit of prophecy out of this and be able to tell us what is, you know, in the making, what's in the works and such. But, but right now, as it stands, you know, we don't, we don't see these things until they've already came by and passed. And then we say, oh, look at that. And of course, we see blood moons and such, and everyone's left there standing, wondering, well, I wonder what it means. You know, there's a blood moon, Scripture talked about it, but what does it mean? 
And I even kind of said, you know, that the blood moon that just passed was just a commemoration of my bride and my first Sabbath of being wed, you know. I, I don't see anything else that took place from it. And we made down the road, but I believe it was just a commemoration of that. I know our, you know, our king loves me. I know our king loves my bride very much. And he gave her to me so I could be helped in these latter days to be able to help you even better. I was running with no steam before, but now this, this queen has, you know, reignited my flame, my love to my first love, and then I found out her and my first love are actually the one and the same. It's, it's my first love. And we're going to uh, resurrect this. We're going to walk with these things. We're going to see deeper because of the love that my bride has for me. She showed me and, and opened up new doors in me that our king can walk through and also help guide all of you in the right way. If you'll prove these things for yourself, you'll see I've got no reason to lie. I don't even have a donation button. I don't. I don't. I don't have advertisements. I have never done it. I don't want an advertisement to come up on my screen, on my channel, on a Sabbath, trying to collect money like many of these other tithe collectors do. They, they forget all the other laws, including the Sabbath laws, trying to collect their money. It's, it's the greed thing, and you're paying. I would just stop. Consider that if they're uh, collecting funds on the Sabbath, you know, from advertisements and such, please consider that maybe they're not, you know, they may be speaking some true things, but they're certainly not walking in it. Because if they preach a Sabbath and not to work or uh, barter, that kind of stuff, cook or, you know, do any work, any business, then if they've got a advertisement on their channel, on their videos, telling you how to keep the law on the Sabbath, and, you know, they're making money from YouTube or whatever, uh, you should <laughs> wake up, okay, wake up. Don't even pay attention to much of what they say. Hear what they say and the truth hold on to. You know, eat the meat off the bones if there is any and toss the bones away. And remember, these ones that are, you know, doing these commercials and such and making money on the Sabbath, they're, they're lying to you by just doing that. You won't see me do that. Money is not worth that to me to deceive you or to uh, make me any better financially from things on the Sabbath. It's just not going to take place. Okay, so we said in verse 19 there, so let's uh, read it again. It says, Behold, the whirlwind of Yahshua, of Yahweh, has gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of Yahshua shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall understand it perfectly. And our king says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. They're always saying, oh, the Lord has said, the Lord has said. But you look in the scriptures, and he didn't say that at all. <laughs> the preacher said, the lying hypocrites said, uh, the Baal worshippers, you know, these Baal priests, they said, our king never said half of what they're trying to tell you. And he never did away with the law. <laughs> I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Now, this is one of the most important scriptures throughout the Holy Bible. Uh, this verse here, it says, uh, 23, 22, But if they had stood in my counsel, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their the evil of their doings. And that's what I'm doing. I'm telling you, stop doing the evil. Start keeping the commandments and the laws. But all these other false prophets that ran, though they weren't sent, you know, and they spoke, yet they, they weren't prophesied of even. These ones, you know, as far as bringing forth truth, now they were prophesied of, uh, you know, 
bringing these problems upon the earth and everything else, but they weren't prophesied to be in the kingdom, that's for certain. And he says, am I a father at hand, says Yahweh, and not a father afar off? Now Isaiah talks about this. He says, is my ear too short that it cannot hear, and my hand too short that it cannot save? He says, no, it's not that. It's your sins that have divided us, you know, to where I can't hear. It's your sins that keep me from hearing. It's your sins that keep me from saving you with my hand. I can't touch you. I can't hear you if you're going to sin. So I'm sent here to repair, repair the breach that you have because of your sin. I'm telling you, you need to repent, which will fill in that breach. And you can walk right across it then to our king and walk in his ways. And that's what he wants you to do. Verse 24, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, says Yahweh? Do not I fill heaven and earth, says Yahweh? I have heard what the prophets said, they prophesy lies in my name. Now that word in should actually be against. Okay, they prophesy lies against my name, saying, I've dreamed, I've dreamed. How long shall it be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are the prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Lord. They forgot my name for, for Lord. Uh, for Baal, which means Lord, okay? The Father's name was forgotten for Lord. So when you call on Lord, you forgot your Father's name. Or you may just never have known it. His name is Yahweh, but I, unless you understand, you know, you're not supposed to eat pork. Don't you be eating no pork chops or ham sandwiches and praising Yahweh for it, because you're going to be... You know, that's not a great thing. You, I, you know, you shouldn't even call on the name of Yahweh unless you're going to do what Yahweh says. And, uh, of course, you know, if you choose to call on our Father's name and to start learning to do what he says, then you'll be forgiven when you make these errors up until you know better. And even, you know, calling on the name of our Father... Uh, it's not an easy process, okay? Some people, it might take uh, 20 years for them to finally get these lords and gods and L's and Ed and I's and, you know, Jehovah's or whatever off their tongues. It's, it, it's something that you had learned so deeply. And that just goes to show that even these wicked and evil things are engraved into us, and it takes work to get them out. So if you were to replace these wicked and evil things with truths... It would take years for you to forget the truth. Think about it, you know. It's taken you years to get rid of the lies. It would certainly take years to get rid of the truth as well, wouldn't it? Well, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes, you know, people can just have one wicked and evil thought, carry it out, and then they lose all the understanding that they had picked up along the road, you know. So you have to be careful with these things. Uh, let's go down to uh, verse... 29, I guess. It says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith Yahshua, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? And, you know, what it's saying is sometimes I'll say things and you'll go, Oh, ow, ooh, ow, that hurt, man. Because you know that you've been sinning in it. And that's what it's talking. It talks about the word, our, our king's word. He became the every living word. So, he is like a fire, his word is like a fire, and like a hammer that breaks rocks and pieces, you know, the, the old lies that you had. And he says, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Father, or Yahshua, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahshua, that use their tongues and say, he saith. You know, our king don't like it at all when you lie about him. When you're telling people that our king said the laws are done away with, or our heavenly father says the laws are done away with, 
he don't like that too much, okay? In fact, he says right here, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, says Yahshua. And do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all. And he's saying, you know, no matter what these lies are, no matter how many times you pay, it's not going to profit you from what these liars are telling you. Verse 23, or 33 of 23. And when this people, or a prophet, or a priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of Yahweh? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, says Yahshua. And as for the prophet, and the priest, and the people, that shall say, The burden of Yahweh, I will even punish that man and his house. You know, if you call the law a burden, people, I'm telling you, you're in for some trouble. Because it's the lightest thing, you know, to have peace with your neighbor or to love them as yourself. That's what these are, you know. And if you say that's a burden, well, you're going to see what your burden is. Thus, uh, verse uh, 35, Thus shall ye say everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother, What hath the father answered and what hath the father spoken, or the king? And the burden... Of Yahweh or Yahshua shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living Father, the Father of hosts, our Father. Now you know it's given to the king. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Father answered thee, and what hath the Father spoken? But since ye say the burden of Yahweh, therefore thus saith Yahweh, Yahshua, because ye say this word, the burden of Yahweh, I have sent unto you, saying, Ye shall not say the burden of Yahweh. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you and forsake you, and the city that I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence, and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you, and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. So, these things, my friend, you know, it's not going to be forgotten if you keep in those ways. Now, he's not saying that if you repent, you know, because right now everyone had been doing these things through the past. They, Everybody has, you know, pretty much walked upon those paths. Today we need to take a look at our footing, uh, see where we are. If we're walking contrary, we need to consider repenting. And Uremia chapter 23 is a very important chapter. It shows things that are actually taking place in these last days. Even this Baal worship, it says, in the latter days you'll understand it perfectly. And I hope that I've explained it enough, uh, even using the Strong's Concordance, to show you that this Lord, you really should refrain from calling on. But, you know, they're go it's going to slip. If you've been calling on the Lord for any amount of time, and you start praying to our Heavenly Father. And that's what I suggest you start doing. Instead of using the name of the Father or the Son, right now, just say King and Father. Okay? Our King, you know, which is our Father's Son. And our Father for the Creator of all things. So if you can do these things, it, you know, it would be much easier. And, and you're already used to calling those names as well. So... Call on those and, and do your best to avoid the El and Elohim, the Adonais, Jehovah's, the Lord's, and these titles, okay? Please get rid of the titles. Uh, it's best until you overcome the laws and commandments that you've been breaking and become righteous. It's best that you not call upon Yahshua, our King, or Father Yahweh's name until you actually get to overcoming. Uh, call him Father. Call him king you know and and they will hear your prayers they'll even hear you if you do slip up and a lord or an elohim comes out because they see the desire of your heart is to overcome so they're going to help you in this but it's going to take you a long time believe you me if you especially if you prayed a lot i mean if you pray a lot and and you consider these things a lot you're always saying you know lord and god and 
you know, these things in your mind all the time. Every time you think of a scripture during the day, these words have been etched deeper and deeper into you. So it's going to take you some time, people, you know, to even stop sinning. You know, you might, you know, see that you're a thief and stop stealing, but then you're going to find out, you know, you're going to see yourself. You're going to examine yourself and see where you've been stealing so many other places that it's unreal. And you're going to say, man, I gave up on it. It's not like stuff in a candy bar in your pocket. There's other ways people steal, <laughs> you know. You can steal someone's reputation by saying something you know, wrong about somebody that, you know, falsely accuse them, you know, you're stealing their character. You're stealing a lot of things from that person and you're cursing them and all sorts of other things when we do this. So, you know, my prayers are for you people. My prayers are for my bride and for me. My prayers are for the King and our Heavenly Father. My thoughts are towards you. My every thought is, you know, for the most part is other than what's for my bride you know it's for you know trying to figure out the proper words to use so you might understand and and that switch be clicked on so if there's a question or something that might help you get that switch turned on or at least understand deeper please ask you know please ask down in the comments leave a comment if you would, uh, all three or four of you that might watch this video, if there's anything you need to know concerning salvation, please ask. And I'm more than glad to, uh, to answer you. Uh, these, once again, are Bible studies for my bride, but it's for all brides. It's for, you know, and even men are going to be the brides of our king. So let's get together people let's put our hearts together and our hands together and let's pray that as many be saved out of the the sea of sin that's surrounding us let, let's see if we can't do some savings here you know and, and come to the word the knowledge of it the truth it talks about in these latter days we'll understand it perfectly and and that's what i'm trying to do is show you some of the things that you can understand so you could see this prophecy is true and it's for these latter days well i'm going to sign off here i love you my bride you are the most wonderful thing our our king has ever done for me that i know of other than you know the day he opened my mind to he turned on that switch that was pretty pretty uh devastating day it was oh it was like everything crashed in on me and it, it was one of the best days, but the best day I know of is when, you know, you wrote me the first time. And uh, every time since has been just marvelous. It's, it's, it's looked forward to, and I know that these things are being written down in heaven. There's books being written about you and me, and people will read about us forever. They'll say, wow, it's just the same as they're going to with Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebecca. All these love stories are going to be available forever. But I think that ours is going to be one of the greatest of all. It was for these last days and for people to see and, and to learn from. And it's just an honor and a blessing, my queen, to ever have known you. And I uh, praise our king for you. And may you be blessed. May you all be blessed. And let's buckle down and... and cover ourselves with these words. Let's get that uh, uh, wall of protection built around us by these laws. And I'm praying for y'all. Bye or shalom.